They are two of the most divisive political campaigns of modern times. And today we were told for the first time that the information commissioner has evidence that personal data siphoned from Facebook was used in the US presidential election and in the British referendum to leave the EU. Cambridge Analytica, the company at the heart of the Facebook data harvesting scandal, has consistently denied the data ended up in either campaign. But today, Elizabeth Denham told this programme there was evidence it had. You've said today that the 87 million users that had their data scraped by Cambridge Analytica, that that data ended up being used in both the presidential election campaign in the US and the referendum. Now, both those things they have denied. That's right. Are you saying today that you have seen data from your investigations that prove to you that the data was used in both those circumstances? We have hundreds of terabytes of data that we have seized and we have to go through that data forensically. So it will take time, but we have seen evidence that data was used in these campaigns. It's just we need to report on it. We need to provide the evidence to the public. While the investigation is yet to be concluded, the revelation goes to the heart of the whole Ferrari. That not only did Facebook allow the data to be siphoned off, it then failed to ensure it had been deleted. And nor did it tell the authorities or the users themselves that the breach had even occurred. And it's for that reason that the information commissioner said today that she had imposed the maximum fine available to her. But at just £500,000, or roughly what Facebook currently makes every 15 minutes, it's hardly punitive. It's a small change to a company like Facebook, there's no doubt about that. But this, I think a very important precedent has been set now. My concern is actually this data breach at Facebook could just be the tip of the iceberg. We're concerned that many other developers were using similar tools to Cambridge Analytica to scrape data from Facebook. And that's not been fully investigated. Facebook are doing that internally. They won't say who they're investigating. Uh, they won't say what the results of that investigation are going to be. So there could be more criminal acts that have been committed involving UK citizens who use Facebook. And I think we have a right to know about the extent of the problem. From now on, Facebook will do more to keep you safe and protect your privacy so we can all get back to what made Facebook good in the first place. Since the scandal broke, Facebook has clamped down on developers siphoning off data and given users more control over their privacy. It admits it should have acted earlier over Cambridge Analytica and says it will respond to the information commissioner's action soon. As for Cambridge Analytica, remember the boss, Alexander Nix. Send some girls around to the candidate's house. They're very beautiful Ukrainian girls. They are very Yes. Uh, I find that works very well. It was this undercover filming on Channel 4 News that prompted his resignation, and now he and other directors potentially face criminal charges for failing to cooperate with the watchdog. And 11 political parties were also sent warning notices about buying personal data for use in political campaigns. And it's that culture of a cavalier approach to scraping data across the entire political spectrum that the Commissioner says must change. Robust talk, perhaps, but this afternoon she appeared to backtrack on earlier comments, saying the Commission was still looking at allegations Facebook data was used as part of the referendum campaign. The full findings and what evidence she has unearthed will be released in October. Siobhan Kennedy reporting. Now, earlier, Krishnan Gurumurthy spoke to senior Facebook executive Richard Allen, began by asking him if they accepted criminal wrongdoing and would pay the fine. We're in a process right now uh, that the Information Commissioner has published an interim report and has made it very clear that's what it is. Uh, she has set out the concerns that she has and her intention to fine. We are now given a period of time to respond and we will respond. But I do want to make it challenging clear, the ruling. I, I just want to make it clear that we have said over the Cambridge Analytica situation where this application uh, run by this company called GSR accessed Facebook data against our terms and passed it on to Cambridge Analytica that that was unacceptable and that there were failings in the way in which we handled that and that we damaged trust with our users and we now need to rebuild that trust. So I, I want to accept you know there are things that we think we did not perform well at and we need to do You've been better. found to have broken the law in a very serious way. At the same time, there, there is a discussion about whether those failings constituted a breach of UK law. 
The Information Commissioner but today... There's not a discussion. The Information Commissioner has decided you no, broke the law. Again, to be very clear, we have cooperated fully with the Information Commissioner's investigation into all of these uh, situations. We've shared information with her. We've worked closely with her. She has published an interim finding that, in her view, we've broken UK law in certain aspects. She's invited us to respond to that, and she herself says she will not publish a final decision until she's taken into account our response. So even after everything that's happened, after the collapse of Cambridge Analytica, you're not accepting no, again, this basic finding? Is that what you're saying? We accept that there were things that we did wrong, and we've apologised to our users for that. We accept there are things that she describes in her report that we did wrong. There's a separate debate about whether or not the legal analysis and the fines are correct, whether that is the right way to deal with it. That doesn't mean we don't accept we did things wrong, and it doesn't mean that we don't respect the Information Commissioner's office and that we've worked closely with them. Is it, is it true that you make half a million pounds in a few minutes? That's your revenue? I mean, our revenue numbers are public, and you can see them and everyone Does else. Does that make sense? Uh, again, I don't think it's about the money. I want to be very clear here yeah, well, that... You know, partly it is about the money for people because they want to see Facebook punished for what it's done. And what you seem to have been given here is a parking ticket for an offence equivalent to harming, person, harming a person by drunk driving. We accept the responsibility, but we also need to understand very clearly uh, some of the detail of the very comprehensive report she's put out. You are, you've got an investigation yourself, haven't you? You've got an investigation going yourself, haven't you? I mean, why mm. won't you reveal where else this has happened? Uh, um, we've said that we are looking at any applications that we believe are high risk. We've said that we've suspended 200 applications to date, not because we have evidence of wrongdoing, uh, but because we have suspicion that there may be something there, that something hasn't checked out. Facebook was in the Trump campaign, wasn't it? Um, can you tell us what Trump, you know, what Facebook people were doing in the Trump offices? Again, um, just to be clear about how our service works, uh, that where politicians wish to use Facebook as a platform to communicate with people, we would rather they do that correctly in accordance with our policies uh, and appropriately. And so we do have people who work with political parties on a neutral basis. We have no interest in one campaign over the other. But if the political ca campaign wants to use Facebook... You were in helping... We, no, we will give them guidance on how to do that correctly, just as we would for any other large client. Do you get why this is important, that this is democracy at stake here, that this is involving the election of the US president and possibly the referendum result in Britain? Absolutely. I, again, I don't want to understate how seriously we take it at uh, Facebook. We're in a situation in which Facebook has been found guilty of breaking the law on data, so we can't trust you with our data. We've revealed how your own rules aren't being adhered to by your own systems. How can we trust your reassurances now? I mean, we're one of the most heavily scrutinised companies in the world, and that's right. Uh, we have a lot of reach to people in many different countries. It's right that we're held to high standards. We also hold ourselves to high standards. Uh, you've identified some areas where we've failed, uh, and I'm here today uh, to apologise for those failings and make it clear that we do recognise uh, that they were weaknesses, that we should not uh, be in this position. Well, with me here in the studio is Christopher Wiley, who was the whistleblower on the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. And I'm wondering, are they rattled? Well, of course they are. They're rattled because they, this is the first time that this company is experiencing uh, public scrutiny at a global scale about how they operate. And it makes them uncomfortable because they know that this is a pervasive problem. Um, you, know, you look at how Facebook had reacted from, to this story from the very beginning, where they threatened to sue The Guardian, knowing full well that it was true. They banned me off of their platform. They refuse, you know, the, the, the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, refuses to come and answer questions to Parliament. Uh, when, when, there, when, when Mark Zuckerberg is asked questions at the European Parliament, when he's asked questions at Congress, they re, he, he doesn't give answers. He's just, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. What they're trying to do right now is ride this out. But what has happened? is the information commissioner has issued a finding that they've broken the law. And mm -hmm. they can't escape that. The law is the law. Data crime is a real crime. And Facebook has, has, has breached the laws of this country and is going to have to own up to it. The fact that they refuse to, 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 to guarantee that they're even going to pay the fine, I, I think really shows how, how, how little this company understands their role in our society and, and, and the impact that they have on our democracy when they won't even assure the public that they'll pay the fine. Well, I mean, the, the issue in a way is the scale of this. I mean, they say they're investigating 200 
other entities like Cambridge Analytica. Is that all they need to investigate? Well, we don't know because they won't open up their company to, to scrutiny. They won't answer questions from the committee. They won't answer questions from investigators. Their, their investigation is behind closed doors and the only people who get to see it is Facebook. But, but specifically, you were investigating Cambridge Analytica, but did you come across others? There are, this is a pervasive problem, and it's not, and, and one thing What does a pervasive say, problem uh, mean? You mean it's a pervasive problem because Facebook, for years and years and years, allowed apps to harvest the data in the exact same way that Cambridge Analytica did. Uh, this is, you know, this, this, this goes beyond just how Cambridge Analytica worked. There's all kinds of companies that use the same kinds of apps on the same terms and conditions that Facebook itself approved. And it does not want the public to, to see that because mm. it's going to have to explain how for years it just let any company, any entity, any app take data willy-nilly without any kind of scrutiny. Well, I mean, what, what is actually going to be done now? I mean, because there's no evidence that the United States is going to move and guide the way we have. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, I've, I have met with the FBI, I've mm -hmm. met with the Security Exchange Commission, I've met with the federal... Uh, and they believe you? Uh, ...the FTC. And there are investigations going on in the United States on the same issue uh, to do with, uh, you know, how Facebook handles uh, it, its users' data. So, you know, it, and, and it's not just in the United States. There's investigations in Europe, in Canada, all over. But as the executive talking to uh, Christian was concerned, I mean, he said, you know, we are cooperating and all the rest of it. I mean, how can you be sure that this is going to lead to anything even matching what the Information Commissioner here has done? I mean, we can't, we can't be sure. And, you know, I think the, 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 the ICO has done a fantastic job within the budgetary and legal constraints that it has. Mm. Uh, it's issued the largest fine that it's allowed to, half a million pounds, uh, for, you know, a multi-billion pound company. Mm. It's, it's small change, but I think it sends a signal that we need to start taking these, uh, you know, this unlawful behavior seriously. Are there any other insiders blowing the whistle? Uh, that we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it seems odd that you're the lone, lone wolf. I, I think, I, I, you know what, it's not odd because the amount of pressure uh, that I have had uh, from Facebook, from Cambridge Analytica, from Steve Bannon, from all kinds of, of actors in this whole story who did not want this information to come out, I understand why other people haven't come out. I have had to stand up to lawyer after lawyer after lawyer from multinational companies. But in a word, do you feel vindicated by today's decision? I feel vindicated and I feel hopeful because this, this is now part of a public conversation about how data and algorithms are affecting our democracy. And for me, that's the first step to, to uh, improving our laws and making sure that in the, moving forward, our, our democracy is going to be more secure. And clearly the people who drafted our legislation didn't recognize that half a million pounds could mean nothing to a very large company. Uh, it, we, we, we uh, you know, it's good that we are moving into a new regulatory regime with the GDPR. Uh, so moving forward, uh, there will be stiffer penalties for, for, for companies. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it shows that there is a, a gap in consideration that, you know, data is becoming the electricity of our economy and our society and that it's so important that we make sure that that is used in a safe way that respects people's rights. Christopher Wiley, thank you very much indeed for coming thank in. Thank you for having me.